Hey guys, Twisted Maxi here. If you're a patron, you probably already know that if you're using Better Build By, you can now use Tool in build mode. This is hands down the most heavily requested feature since I created Tool, and it wasn't a thing until now because it would have been a maintenance nightmare, but since Better Build By is a thing and it touches a lot of the same files, it made sense to do it as an extension for Better Build By. So I'm going to do this in a little bit of a different style from my usual tutorials. I'm just going to run with it. So if you aren't familiar with Tool or Better Build By, you can still start here, but you should definitely check out the original tutorials for a better feel of the basics. If you aren't familiar with Better Build By at all, it's my mod that adds the expandable catalog, organized debug, and build mode free cam, which is a lifesaver for those that are doing shell tours because it means you don't have to worry about getting a sim on the lot or what lot type it is in order to do the tour. Uh, one thing is I know not everybody loves organized debug because it does involve restarting the game before you can upload to the gallery without the CC tag. I do want to point out that just because you have to have better build by doesn't mean you have to turn on organized debug. So if you're wanting the tool build mode integration, you can still get that without having to turn on that tag. All right, so let's jump into the build mode integration. Traditionally, if you were using tool, you had to go into live mode, shift click an object, and then click on tool actions from there. And you had to do that for every single action you wanted to do with tool. But if you have both mods installed, now you can press shift T and that'll bring up this dialog. A lot of people have probably moved this dialog around before, but once you're in build by, you might find that you prefer it in a different spot. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. We're going to go into options. We're going to change settings, go down to set dialog position. And I personally think it looks better in the left in build by. So there we go. It's docked to the left. I'm going to hit OK, go back to the main menu, and we're good to go. So just real quick, I want to point out that while this is open, you can still drag things out from the catalog. And once they're placed, then tool takes over. All right, so I'm going to come over here and I think I want these to go from top to bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one to activate it. And then I want to add these to the group. So I'm going to alt click. And then I want to clone it. So I'm going to actually hit Alt Shift and then click on the objects themselves. That will clone it in the exact position that they were already in. So then all I have to do is elevate by one. And there we go, we've got that. And I'm gonna come back down here and do it again. I'm just gonna Alt Click. And then we're gonna Alt Shift Click to clone. And I'm going to de-elevate by putting in a negative one. And just like that, we have stuff from top to bottom. Okay, so I want to jump down to the scale option. Um, while you can actually scale objects in build by, you can only do it in very large increments and there's not really a whole lot of precision to it. So what you'll find is many times you won't be able to use an object because even though you can scale it up and down, all of those scaling levels are not quite the right fit for what you need. So the way tool comes in is that you can hit shift T Activate the object and then click on scale. And uh, an important thing to remember is even if you've scaled an object up or down in build by, the original size of the object is what counts as one. And scale is not additive, so whatever you put in here is going to be its exact scale. One is the original size. Anything larger than one is going to be bigger than its original size. And anything smaller than one, which would be a decimal, is going to be smaller than that original size. So if I wanted this object to be just slightly smaller than it originally was, I'm gonna put in 0 0.9. And you can see it just, it just moved it down a tiny bit. So if I want it to be really tiny, I can do 0 0.01. And it is actually still there, but you can't really see it. So, just to give you an idea of um, how much control you have on the objects, Tool has much higher precision than Build by Scale. Uh, I don't actually want it that tiny, so I'm gonna go in Options and hit Undo. And we'll go ahead and set it to, um, let's say 0 0.25. And that looks fine to me, we're just gonna leave it there. So for the rest of these functions, I want to give us a specific scenario to work with. For sake of simplicity, I'm going to just say it's a zombie attack and this lot is supposed to be a bunch of sims that have barricaded themselves in. So we're going to stage that door to look like they have done so. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to close tool 
drag this over here and we're going to shift T to open it back up, rotate, and it's on the right axis, but if it wasn't, we could hit change axis to switch it up. And I am going to rotate it on its back. I know players have been wanting indicators for which side is positive and negative when rotating. Um, I do plan to add that, but it's not in this release. But in the meantime, if an object has a front, then you can generally assume that if you put a positive number in, it's going to rotate toward the front and then the negative is going to rotate toward the back. So since we want it on its back, we're going to do negative 90. And that does get it perfectly flat, but it is in the ground a little bit. So we're going to elevate by 0.5. And that looks good to me. So we're going to move this out so it's in front of the door. This gets into why we wouldn't want to use move. Because if I clicked on numerical move, um, you'll see that this lot is actually diagonal to the world axis. And so it can be a pretty big pain to try to guess which numbers to move by to get it exactly where you wanted it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to close that out and we're going to use the newer click and move feature. Um, so I could just click anywhere to move an object to that exact spot. But since we want to move it in front of this door, what we're going to do is use the gravity pull feature. And the way that works is that I hold down alt and I click somewhere on the ground and it calculates the distance from the object to where I clicked and does a move based on a small portion of that. So the farther away I click from the object, the bigger the move increment is going to be. So we'll get it about right. And then as we get close, I'll click closer to the object to move it in smaller increments. And that looks good to me. I need to pull it out from the door a little bit, so I'm going to do so. Okay, and then we want to clone this so that there's one on top. So I'm just going to alt shift click. Now there's two in that exact position and I want to elevate by one. That is too much. So we're going to de-elevate by negative point three. And that's not quite right. So one more, we're going to elevate by 0 0.05. Okay, that looks good but it doesn't really look realistic. Like if I was in the middle of a zombie attack, I probably wouldn't take time to line up the cabinet corners. I don't know about you, but I would not. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of an offset to this. The way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to gravity pull the cabinet out this way, but in doing so, we're going to hit one of the common pitfalls for new tool users. And that has to do with a setting called snap to terrain. Um, so if I were to nudge this out right now, you will see that it does move outward, but it also heads toward the ground as well. So we don't want that to happen. We want to keep our elevation. So we're going to hit undo, undo, undo. That puts us back where we were. And I'm going to show you the setting. We go to change settings, snap to terrain. This is here mainly for when you take objects off the lot. Um, if there's a hill or something, it makes it easier to move an object to that hill because it will automatically elevate to whatever that hill's surface is. If this isn't turned on and you go to move to a hill, that object is going to end up underneath the dirt. So it's not really that useful for when we're building on lot. So it is important to remember that the setting is here because when you want to keep your elevation, you don't want this setting to keep changing it on you. So we're going to turn that off. We're going to hit OK and we're going to try nudging again and you'll see that now it moves outward, but it's not going down like it was before. So I actually want to add a little bit of a rotation to this. So I'm going to go back to rotate. Okay, we want to change the axes first. So we're going to change it to this one. And then I'm just going to throw a 10 in here. And that looks good. But of course, we need to pull it out from the door. So I'm going to nudge it out this way. Okay, that looks good, but it's probably not going to hold a whole lot back. So I think we need to add some more cabinets that are tilted up against those. So we're going to go ahead and grab this one over here and we're going to rotate it so that the back is facing it. Okay, we're going to free rotate so that we can match up the rotation on this cabinet. And that's good enough. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that with tool. And I'm going to pull it out this way. And then of course we want to rotate it backwards. So we're going to change axis. 
So we want to rotate by negative 50. And that works, but again, we're kind of sticking in the ground. So we're going to elevate by 0.5. That's too much. Undo. Let's try elevating by 0.4. Okay, that looks good to me. We just need to pull it out so that it's not sticking inside the other cabinet. So we're going to gravity pull it out. And we'll call that good. And then we're just going to go ahead and throw a chair in there because why not? Um, we want this one to be leaning up against this little ledge right here. So we're just going to rotate. We're going to do negative 60. And then elevate by point 0.4. Pull it on out. And that's actually too high, so we need to de-elevate by negative point three. Okay, and then up a little bit more, so we'll just do point zero five. That looks good to me. We need to move it toward the cabinet a little bit more. And we're gonna go ahead and add one more cabinet even. We're just gonna go ahead and rotate that one onto its back. Move it over here. Okay, we want to get this chair out of the way. And then we're going to elevate by 0.5 again. And that looks about right to me. We need to move it toward the other cabinets a little bit more. And we need to pull it out so that it's not digging into that other cabinet that's tilted. Okay, we'll call that good. Of course, this is just a very tiny example of what Tool can be used for, but hopefully it gives you a sense of how Tool can help you convey your ideas on your builds a lot more clearly. Um, it can really just bring that extra touch to any type of build that you're working on. It doesn't have to be any huge creation either, like especially if you're starting out with Tool. It can just be little accents here and there, like maybe you decide that you wanted four tiles on this table instead of two. You can just duplicate it and elevate an extra stack of towels and there you go. It's just something in your build that is probably not going to be in somebody else's build and it, it kind of sets it apart. All right, everyone, that should do it. As I said at the beginning, if you are a tool newbie, do yourself a favor and check out my original tutorial. I do much more handholding in that one, so save yourself some headache and give it a watch. This build mode integration is currently in early access for patrons. Do not feel like you have to become a patron to get it. All of my mods release for free shortly after the early access period, and this one is due out on this upcoming Thursday. Of course, if you'd like to join just to show support, that is always appreciated. All my official releases are available on TwistedMexi.com, so keep an eye out there on Thursday. Thanks everyone, and I hope you have a good day.